I remember the night of my 21st birthday. That was the first time I died. It's the Caro! Oh, it's the Caro! Come on, wake up, sunshine! Oh, now up here, you fool! Ah, look at me! Come on, what's the matter, you pussy? Huh? Hey, one little baby tap from a nightclub bouncer, you gonna sleep on me over here? Hey, yeah, I already told you, he don't look so good. That guy was a goddamn gorilla. Ugly too. Oh, he's gonna rip my nuts off, he finds out we never collected his money. Oh, man. Man, we screwed the pooch on this one, Jackie. You know what Paulie's like. You don't collect, best not to even come home. And hey, Paulie don't know nothing, all right? We'll tell him the money was stolen before we got there. Maybe he'll be nice, because... Cause it's Jackie's brother. The guy's a fool. You wouldn't know nice if it slapped him upside the head with a 50 pound sledgehammer. Jesus Christ. We gotta get a plan. Okay, okay, okay. Practical question. You think Hollywood's gonna want us to take the ball? Such a sight? I'm headed that way. Yeah. I mean, I mean, was adamant, right? I mean, maybe if we like that guy nice and clean, like. Maybe for honor, don't you think? Maybe. We gotta get the first one. Hey, we got company. Drive, goddammit! Hold on to your lunch! Ha <laughs> Christ, mate! You're gonna kill us! <laughs> I told you there was company. I heard the sirens. Did I say I heard the sirens, Nino? You hear sirens in your sleep, Mike. You're gonna shake these assholes away. Watch this. Staring like a retard. We gotta shake these things. Come on, hold up and help me out. This is a New York City Police Department. Stop the car and step out with your hands in the air. Anytime you're ready, Jackie. I'm gonna take your time. Don't worry about me. We got new uniforms. You see them new uniforms they got? Pretty sharp. Hey, hey, these are any suits, boys. How the hell are they shooting at us? This is supposed to be on Polly's payroll. Fuck them. Polly's gonna go ape shit on us anyway. So keep shooting. Did you drive straight? I can't get a beat. I am driving straight. You shoot straight. Like you crazy bastard. Hey, you wanna drive that gas? Where's that guy on the left? I get the one trailing. Zen construction site. Happily named. Classic mob venture filled with blue collar construction workers armed to the teeth. And my boss, Uncle Paulie, sent me here to whack the foreman. Like I said, classic. I 
think I busted my watch. Do that again. Ah. Oh man, would you look at that? These pants cost me 400 bucks so at South. Now they got blood stains all over them. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Some fucking 21st birthday for you, huh? Yeah. Got your present. Thanks, Mikey. Atta boy, Jackie. You look after those pieces and use them well. Uh, no, this looks real bad. Real bad. Now go find out what's going on. Get the hell out of here. Mikey, who's this Sullivan guy? And what did he do to Paulie? Who gives a shit? He probably looked at him the wrong way. There ain't no free passes for party. No matter what he did. Best remember that. Where do I find Sullivan? He should be in his office. At the far end of the site. You be careful though. This boy is sure as hell nowhere coming. How many guys he got on the site? 20, 30 tops. Some real hard asses from, from the Emerald Isle. Hey, fuck it. Let's just go home, and we're gonna tell Paulie we blew it. Are you crazy? <laughs> That's like asking a goddamn shark to share its dinner. Finish the hate. He just might make it out alive. Uh, okay, Jack. We feel all right now. Let's go make that hit. Small talk. Because I sure as hell ain't asking Paulie Franchetti. No, I mean, why do you need a loan? Chelsea goes off to college next year. I gotta get her out to the West Coast or something. Chelsea's your daughter? No, she's my girlfriend. Works out at the Cavern Club. Oh, right. That's very generous of you. What can I say? She's a good kid. Plus, I gotta make sure she never runs into my wife. Marie thinks I'm at art class on Tuesday nights. <laughs> yeah, that's a stroke of genius. You're the caring, nurturing paragon of virtue that we all aspire to. Where'd you learn words like that anyways? 
I bought some encyclopedias off some guy came to the front door one time. Oh yeah? How much? Well, <laughs> I didn't exactly pay for them. I caught him looking through the curtains at my wife. So I tapped him on the kneecaps with a hammer a couple of times and told him if I ever saw him around my neighborhood again, I'd stick a grenade up his ass. He seemed to lose his interest in the sale at that point. Wow. You're pretty generous yourself. I would have just wasted his ass. What? And get blood? All over my nice new set of encyclopedias? Sure, I Me and Paulie never did agree about the way things were being done. Paulie took the business into selling drugs, working side by side with the cops. When I was growing up, the family had codes. We did business. We looked out for the people. I believe we ought to honor those codes. Now Paulie, he's just a parasite. Wants to bleed me dry. I saw him. He came out of the window. Down there. He's going towards the cemetery. Tell the boys to drive around the block. We'll squeeze them in there. Where is he? I don't see him no more. I lost him too. Keep looking. He didn't go far after that fall. Darkness will fall. his brains out. Place. Angel statue and everything. Eh? 
What the hell are you talking about? You're in a piss parlor, kid. Unless you mean the Trinity Cemetery outside. Is there a way out of this fucking cemetery? There's a gate at the north end. Yeah, you got luck on it, though. Keeps out the undesirable element. Shit. You look like a bomb hit you up the ass. I wouldn't stay here for too long, son. I like your shoes. I've heard people complain that life is unpredictable. Well, I never had a life that was predictable. But what happened to me today? That's why I need you, Jenny. You're the only one I can count on. Yo, 
Jackie! It's me, Enzo! Way up! I hear you pissed off your Uncle Paulie. Put his boys out to look for you. You knock bones with one of his girls or something? Why don't you ask him? Uh-uh. I steer clear of that little rat like he had the bubonic plague. What the hell did you do? Uh, money was involved. I was unconscious at the time. Yeah, uh, well, what are you gonna do? Hey, I was wondering, you still seeing that girl Jenny? Because I was thinking, you know, if you ain't... Hey. I'm still seeing her. Matter of fact, she just pays me. Oh. Okay. Well, there's a phone down the platform you can call her from, you know? Hey, you say hi for me, okay? Hey, see you around, Jackie. Jenny. It's me, Jackie. Hiya, baby. Happy birthday. I just got into my new place. I thought you were gonna help me unpack. Yeah. I'm sorry, baby. Things got kind of screwed up at work. Again? That's too bad. I have a surprise for you. I can't talk right now, but I'll be there soon. I promise. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. Look, just remind me again how to get to your new place. It's on Orchid Street here in Chinatown. It's just next to the basketball court. It's apartment number 11. Oh, but you'll have to go around back through Mulberry Alley. They're doing repairs or something on the front door. Are you on your way now? I'll be over as soon as I can. Now do me a favor. Just don't open the door till you know it's me. I'm a big girl, mystery man. I can take care of myself. I'll see you when you get here. Hey, humor me just this once. Okay? Now I gotta run. Bye. Thank you. 
Hey, Jackie, it's me, Nicky Barucci. Hey, wait up. Good to see you, Jackie. How you doing? Yeah, well, I'm doing good. So what's the news with Paulie? And how's the wife? Yeah, so-so, Jackie. But it ain't the wife I'm worried about. It's Paulie. That little Doberman don't see anything but money. Words out, Jackie. He's paying a lot of cash to the guys who bring you down. Some of the younger boys, they get scared to take a dump without his permission. Spineless little turds. I wouldn't come around here for a while if I was you. Paulie put a hit on me. Already. Yeah, already. You just be careful around here, son. And, and try not to whack anyone. Old Butch has got his hands full cleaning up the last mess. Some asshole hit the head chef at the Olive Grove by mistake. It's a fucking bloodbath in there. You remember Jenny, right? She moved to a new place around here. It's supposed to be by some ball court. You know where it is? The basketball court, sure. First street to the left, and then second to the right. But in case you didn't hear me the first time, Paulie's got a hit out on you. So be careful. Thanks for the advice, Mr. Barucci. But I can take care of myself. Ever been in love with somebody who is so beautiful and pure, you couldn't bear to show them your own darkness? That's how I feel about you. We grew up together in St. Mary's Orphanage. I guess I'm gonna have to tell you the truth about what kind of scumbag I really am. But what the hell am I gonna say? Stand in the shadows, Chuck. is in the Oh my God, can you believe this place? 
Come here. Look on the kitchen table. <laughs> Surprise! Cake. <laughs> you won't believe this. Look, John Carlos spelled your name wrong again. <laughs> well, you gonna blow out the candles? Happy birthday, rat face. You're finally legal. I know you always piss and moan about your birthday, but I couldn't resist. I mean, you're only 21 once, right? Are you okay, babe? You're being kind of quiet. I got a real problem, Jenny. Something happened today with my Uncle Paulie. And it's a real bad situation. Polly? What kind of situation? Okay. See, here's the thing. I was supposed to collect some money from my Uncle Polly downtown. Only the money wasn't there. And now Uncle Polly's kind of pissed at me. I'm sure it's gonna be okay. It's been like nine years since he took you home from the orphanage. Your Uncle Polly likes you, doesn't he? Jenny, maybe you don't get it. Uncle Paulie isn't a teddy bear. He's a fucking psychopath. And he's gonna kill me. Kill you? What are you talking about? What exactly do you do for your Uncle Paulie anyway? I'm a contract killer. I, uh, kill people for the Franchetti crime family. I meant to tell you. I just didn't know how, baby. What? Are you nuts? You are nuts. This is just like you, Jackie. There's something else wrong and you're hiding it with some kind of weird-ass story you just made up. Hey, come on. It's your birthday and I've got a new apartment. Let's take one day off from fucked up. Your friend Butcher came by today. He wanted you to call him when you could. I wrote the number on the notepad by the phone. Come on, sit here for a while, Jackie. And watch some TV with me. Jackie, what is it? Jenny? Yeah? Nothing. <laughs> Let's just sit here for a while, okay? You want the remote, don't you, mister? Uh-uh. No, my apartment, my TV, my remote. Are you cold, Jackie? God. It's freezing in here.
It's good having you here. It's kind of calming. I'm always calm when you're here. I can feel your heartbeat. I'm too tired to get up. Megan was a tired old town, even in 1932 when I first knew it. Somehow it was hotter then. Men stiff collars wilted by nine in the morning. Ladies bathed before noon, after their three o'clock naps. And by nightfall were like soft tea cakes with frosting of sweat and sweet towels. A day of 24. I know a guy that worked down here one time. Yeah, Mickey Fatlips. 
weird son of a bitch. Used to collect subway tokens and feed them to his cat. You say Jackie, here, try one. They're a good source of iron. Stupid fuck. I said what I needed to say. It ain't fair, man. That asshole won't let me play my harmonica at my spot unless I give him a couple hundred bucks. Who won't let you play? Big guy. He's always hanging here. Goes by the name of Compton Scar. If I could fight like I play, I'd tear him a couple of new holes just for kicks. You just gotta know how to persuade a guy. Wait here. <laughs> You got a problem, tough guy? Yeah. My problem is I'm a big music lover, and I don't got no music to listen to. Now my buddy with the harmonica? He's an honest-to-God virtuoso. So my suggestion is that you leave him alone and let him do his thing. And if I don't? Well, if you don't, I got a magic trick for you. I see you around here again, dipshit. I'll put my arm down your throat and pull a rabbit out your fucking ass. Just relax, all right? You can play down here if he wants. Thanks, son. I never would say this to no one, but you got a good heart. Through the grapevine, you're at the Olive Grove. Yeah. Now let me tell you something. It's a good thing your Aunt Sarah's out of town. The Olive Grove is right next to her apartment, and this has been one messy afternoon. Now you get yourself over here, but tread lightly. I've got my share of shit for tonight, okay? Hey, leave the goons to me. Now listen, Butch. Things are happening. I'm about to get my ass handed to me by a very nasty scumbag whose name rhymes with Paulie Franchetti. Okay, now I want you to notice. I do this only for you because of who your father was and because you've always shown respect to your family. Now listen, you go through Doya's alley across from Jenny's apartment. I got my car parked there. Make sure no one sees you. I'll leave the back door entrance to the kitchen open. You got that? Check back later.
town. I gotta be careful around here. Polly's got eyes on every street corner. Miss something? Last I looked, we were standing outside a bloodstained restaurant after a messed up hit. Not picking our toenails in Miami. Ah, eh, whatever. As I heard it, Jackie got too tight with the old guys. Didn't like the fact all you dealing drugs and home so. That's either bravery or suicide. All he must have done well. He made some waves. Some of the old boys ain't so happy he went in after his own cousin's kid. Them useless old pricks are always complaining about something. Back in that day, everyone hung out with Al Capone, and all the cops were clean. Even Eddie Schroeder. So, what does Butcher think of all this? Same as always. He keeps his cock close to his chest. You know me? I never choose sides. Why he's lasted so long, he asked my opinion. Best cleaner in the business. You should show some more respect. That's what Estacado said before Paulie shoved a half a ton of dynamite up his ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look. We gotta keep a low profile until the butchers clean out the kitchen. It's a mess in there. Won't be when butchers finished. He's the best. Yeah, my hero. If there's one untouchable in this business, it's Butcher Joyce. You put out a hit on some guy, Butcher flushes his body. No one's ever the wiser. Butcher knows everyone's business. But what keeps him alive is that he never, ever chooses a side. Yeah. Too bad there's a war coming. you coming from a block away, Jackie. With expensive Italian shoes. Make you sound like a fucking bull elephant. Like a new generation. Every cop for a half a mile around probably knows you're here. Fucking cops all I need now, huh? Grab that body, would ya? Oh. Oh. Gotta call me in when I'm eating dinner. Can't you people make your hits at a reasonable time of the day, huh? Jeez. 
You know, they told me there was only one body to dispose of. We'll uh, be one of those. No. Dealers from the alley. So what happens? Instead, some moron puts a bullet right between Jeff Elmitz's eyes. Ah, what are you gonna do? Just drop it in the trunk. I'll take care of it. All right. Good enough. What happened to you tonight? I wish the hell I knew, Butch. I don't know. I guess Paulie thinks I'm gunning for his throne. Someone cold cocks me on a takedown at Dino's. Next thing I know, I got the 5th Italian Cavalry riding my ass. You know me, Jackie. I never choose sides. Whatever the problem is, it's, it's up to you and Paulie to solve it. This gets out of hand, the Chicago families will intervene. When that happens, ooh, buddy wins. So you beat Paulie's guys, and he's not a good loser. Now, I wouldn't put it past him to throw Eddie Schroeder on your ass. Cops. Fucking cops. Ugh. Hold on a second. Why would the Chicago families give a fuck? They care about two things. Respect and money. Not necessarily in that order. You make the money, you earn their respect. You rock the boat, they throw you in the ocean. Hmm? Now you listen to me, Jackie. Your only option is to take down Paulie before he takes you down. Put a big enough dent in his business the Chicago people will see to it he has an accident. I would never be one to suggest how you do this. But if you ask me, you need to pay a visit to Dutch Oven Harry. Put some holes in him. Dutch Oven Harry? No, never heard of him. Who's Dutch Oven Harry? I'll tell you. Harry is Paulie's biggest dealer of illicit medicine. Works out of a building in Hunter's Point. Now, if I were the kind of man to be involved in things like this, I'd take down Harry, and I'd pull all of his merchandise out of the building. But I'm not, see? You don't want to come walking up to their front door, so go through that rundown billiards club at Whitefish Alley. There's a back door leading to Hunter's Point from there. Hmm? <laughs> Fuck. The cops. This is why I don't get involved. Get back inside. Call it resisting arrest. Dig him out, boys.
Listen, the best way to my Uncle Paulie's heart is through his rib cage with a meat cleaver. Failing that, you screw up his distribution and let the Chicago people collect on him. Now, I've been all over town picking up Paulie's drug money from his street peddlers, but I've never been to Dutch Oven Harry's. you a question? Sure. Okay. Hypothetically speaking, right? Would a moose have sex with me if I gave it ten million dollars? Well, that's a lot of money. So, would it? Well, I guess it would depend on the moose. If it was a genetically altered moose with the brain power equal to a human and capable of speech, I'd have to say yes. Okay. And where would I find such horny, naughty mooses as Sweden, and everybody knows that the Swedes are open-minded when it comes to sex. Cross-species sex, too, I'm sure. Yeah, those filthy Swedes. God bless them. What's up? Are we all right? Let me a couple of bucks, eh? Huh? 
I gotta take a train. Say, you got any liquor on you? Sorry, pal. I'm dry. Hey, you know Dutch Oven Harry? Oh, you, you wanna get wired up? <laughs> you, you go by the side door and tell them old Matty Forehand sent you. If they ask, you say, hit me. And then they bring the really good shit. Now, now, you make sure not to point any guns in their general direction. I don't want to get caught in a crossfire. What's the password? Hit me. I gotta see Dutch Oven Harry. Come on in. Harry ain't around. You want something? Talk to Roach. <laughs> Don't just dick around. You want something? Go in there. you to do the clean run tonight. What are you, fucking crazy? I got a date with that stripper, Camille, from the Pink Pony, the one with the huge tits. Now you tell him I ain't doing it. <laughs> yeah, nice try, man. You tell him. I've grown attached to my testicles over the years, and I'm planning on keeping them. All right, fine. I'll do it. Tell him I'm on it. You know Camille's really a guy, don't you? Yeah. So? Hey, buddy. I never seen you here before. I'm just stand there. Come in. Bye. I saw this Frankie this snake movie yesterday. The one with the chick from Witchblade. Some fucking ninja comes after him, so he pulls out two eagles, and he's like, bam, bam, bam. Goes away like fucking crazy. Fifty rounds in less than twenty seconds. Fifty rounds? What do you see? What do you mean? That's like some kind of Hollywood suspend your disbelief kind of stuff. Who gives a shit? There's a slow mo bit where he spits on his gravestone, and. Then he takes off on his huge badass Holly. Greatest moment in the history of film. Forget about it. Unbelievable. <laughs> and what was it called? This this Oscar-worthy masterpiece of, of the silver screen. Frankie Stay. Back room, amigo. Get going. tonight with a couple of Gino's girls. I got everything. What do you need? I need Harry. Where is he? You got some nerve, kid. Hey, Roach. What's up, Harry? Just got a call from the boss. Someone's coming to pay us a visit. Oh. He's already here. Harry, you want me to bring out the hard liquor? What are you crazy? Come on!
They're probably wondering who is this. Well, Roach took the evening off. I'm the new guy. Uncle Paul is pretty much a scumbag. Not that anyone has the balls to tell him to his face. Paul, he took me out of an orphanage I lived in after my parents died. It's kind of like being rescued from a shark attack by a grizzly bear. The only reason he took me in was because he needed another hitman. We never did see eye to eye.
everywhere. It burned my skin. So many died. Bodies rotting in the rain. I hear the screams even now. Murders. Screams of dying. Cries of the damned. Always the screams of the dying. Cries of the dead. In the hill, screams of the dying, cries of the dead. that it's evil. Where are you? I'm at home, but I'm going by there right now to see if there's anything I can do to help. Jimmy's picking me up. Can we meet at Fulton Street by the exit to the orphanage? You can take the train from Canal and be at Fulton in a minute. I'll be there as soon as I can. Who says the subway is dangerous? Never sat in the back of a yellow cab, going the wrong way, at 90 miles an hour, through the Midtown Tunnel, with a guy who can't speak a lick of English, my buddy, Crazy Abdul. Fire that is playing the St. Mary's Orphanage. 
Earlier reports that this might have been a terrorist attack have been quelled by Captain Edward Schrote of the New York City Police Department. He has said that the explosion was likely the result of a gas leak and that there's currently no suspicion of criminal activity having been involved in this tragic accident. As you can see behind me, the fire is still way out of control and the fire department is desperately searching for anyone who may still be alive inside. Shit! Jane, we've been asked to leave the area. It's not safe for us to be here. All right, thank you, Matt. Stay tuned for more information on this developing story on Newswatch 6. Hey, good to see you, Jackie. Listen, I wish we could be meeting under better circumstances, but you know the way things are. Oh my God, Jackie. This is so awful. No one's heard from Sister Mary. Police said it was some kind of a gas main explosion, but it feels like they're hiding something. Our sister Mary? Jesus, what about the kids? <sighs> Two or three died. One of the firemen told me some have severe burns. Yeah, I know, Jenny. It's a terrible thing, sweetie. It's a terrible thing. But, um, you mind if I have a quick word with Jackie? Okay, I guess. Jackie, come here. Let me tell you something. I've seen this shit happen time and time again ever since that fat fucking Paulie took over the mob. You understand? He's doozy bots. He's out of his fucking mind. Last week, last week he cut off Tony Lucchese's big toe. Why? It's a fucking baseball game. Can you believe that? A disagreement over a baseball game. That fat piece of shit thinks he can't be touched, right? Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. He's gonna be touched. Oh boy, is he gonna be touched. I'm telling you, someone goes to grind his lane, and they burn all the fucking money he's holding for the Chicago guys. Listen, Jimmy. Now, you know out of respect, I would never do anything like that unless you guys gave the word. If I make a move, will you keep an eye on Jenny? Jackie, I she was my own flesh and blood. I swear to God. Just kick the fuck out of them. You hear me? Kick the fuck out of them. Yes, yeah, it's, it's terrible about Sister Mary, huh? Yeah. She was tough on us, but she was the only mother we had. And those poor kids. I can't stop thinking about them. I hope they didn't suffer. Grinders Lane. This is the center of Paulie's operation. The place always makes me want to kick a fucking dog. Or something. I wouldn't hang out around here if I was you, pal. I mean, there is something that just ain't right about this place. I mean, you see all the meat shipments coming in, but like nothing ever fucking comes out. I'm not making this up, man. They're probably shipping in something illegal, like a rhino meat or something, huh? Okay, check this out. There's a control box on the other side of the gate. 
It's on the wall, but you gotta look real close, cause it's hidden in the shadows. Okay, hey, listen. If you want to get in, you got to get past the electric lock. I'm serious. Okay, remember, the control box for the electric lock is hidden on the other side of the gate. It's on the wall, but you got to look close. Something like that. He thinks it was the old boys, Jimmy the Grave, Nicky Ferrucci, and them guys, but he has no proof. Is this one that Paulie Franchetti named proof? Some of them old guys, they still got connections with the VIPs in Chicago. I mean, even Paulie knows if he acts now, he's going to get his ugly little clock clean. So in the meantime, we got to keep an eye out for Mr. Gano, huh? Man, Hey, relax, huh? He wouldn't be dumb enough to show his face here.
That's him, damn it! Oh. I love this subway station. My Uncle Paulie brought me down here on vacation one time. Count the trains. Best two days me and him ever spent together. Jackie, they snuck up on me and nailed me from behind. Paulie and that fucking piece of shit Eddie Schroed. Well, listen, you gotta get to the orphanage. They took Jenny to the orphanage. You gotta get there. Go on, move, quick, move! When you kill for a living, life's only precious if you're staring down the barrel of a gun. Or somebody you care about is. Paulie can have my possessions, my life, Anything I own. Anything except you. Anything! Boom! <laughs> what? Just like that? Just like that. And the beauty of it is, this orphanage is where Edna Carter will get a girlfriend to walk together. <laughs> no shit. You think that's why Polly torched the place so bad? That little slug's ass does everything for effect. How'd you think he got the coffee to drop off the streets last fall? Think the school bus crash that killed half their kids was an accident? Jesus, my own. I'm glad I ain't got no little ones at home. Eddie Schroet's just as bad. He'd kill your goddamn goldfish if he thought he'd keep you in line. I hear you. So, what do we do now? We wait for Estacado to show up and we break his face when he does. Paulie says to take it nice and slow. He wants it to hurt. I don't get it. Estacado was like a son to him. Eh? Easy come, easy go. Is someone over
something, Jackie? Finish your soup, Jackie. Be thankful. Be thankful.
nothing. Promise me, Jackie. No more frogs. No more killing. Promise. No more killing. Cross your heart and hope to die. Cross my heart and hope to die. <laughs> Did you feel that? It got so cold all of a sudden. I don't feel nothing. It's like... Like we're being watched. It's like someone just walked over my grave. So right about oh, you. Shut up, you dumb broad. You're giving me a fucking headache. This was your idea, Franchetti. If it was up to me, I'd have blown her brains out already. Hey, well, it's not a... Fuck you! Why are you doing this? Maybe you should ask your boyfriend when he gets here. Jackie? Why haven't you fucked him oh, over shut enough? Shut fucking mouth, bitch! <laughs> Be still and watch. Okay. Please don't kill me. No! Oh! Damn it! Your flesh is mine. Your will is mine. Well, 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 just in time. I heard you and your girlfriend grew up here, Estacado. What a shithole. Oh, my nose. And now the place looks like it was hit by a bomb. Oh, Get up. what's the matter? Don't know your ass from your elbow with all that demon shit. You, you know why we're here? As you heard me, Jackie. I took you in for my own. I trusted you. So now all this blood is on your hands. Jackie, what's going on? Get me out of here. Ah, shut the fuck up! No. You see a happy ending here, Jackie? You figure you got something to bargain with me so that I don't blow her fucking brains out her fucking nose? Cause the way I see it, you got nothing. It just gets bigger and bigger, don't it, Jackie boy? We hurt you, you hurt us. It's like some fucking game we're playing here. And you caused me a lot of trouble, boy. You were my blood, Jackie. I loved you like a son, and you took from me. You stole my respect, and you stole my trust. And when blood takes from blood, someone always pays. So now, I take from you. Jackie, this is not your fault. Clean it. 
rough hewn cross. I keep hearing a voice whispering. There's a sickness in me. I'm losing my mind. I don't even think we're real. I think the darkness created us. Thundering line of battle stands, and in the air death moans and sings. The day shall blast me with strong hands, and the night shall fold in. God help us all. be over by Christmas and whatnot. You're going to need to reach the village through the sewers. But be sharp about it. Han are closing in. Have a word with Corporal Greenwood. He can show you the way to the sewers. One in the village. My name is Captain William Eldridge, Second Army of the British Expeditionary Force. Who must be the Yank we've been hearing about? You're probably wondering about the spot of bother you've gotten yourself into. Bit of a sticky wicket, eh? <laughs> I can't tell you much. Need to know basis and all. You're going that way, son, and I wouldn't fall about. I've seen things down there that would make grown men cry. If I were you, I'd get in there sharpish. Keep moving and don't look back, whatever you do. Don't mess about, lad. Get going. Stop pissing around, son. Get down there. There's no explanation for what's happened to me. Maybe this place isn't a place at all. Maybe it's a state of mind. I mean, I'm supposed to be dead. I remember you. I remember the gunshot. I think I'm in hell. Daddy, go back or be lost forever. Worse than hell. Nothing can come of this. Turn away! Shape and Bristol fashion. Nothing for you here. Young Astacado! Let's get into the church, eh? He's waiting for you in the church. I'd get inside before the bloody Germans find out you're here! Hey, hey, carry on! Jackie, was it? The old man's been expecting you.
You'll find your American chum in the church. Mad. But I'm not! I'm not mad! They're mad! Can you hear it? it? Sounds like a gun. Start! It's alive! Lies. What else exists? Close my eyes. No one else exists. Close my eyes. No one else exists. <laughs> a sight for sore eyes. Listen, kid. I know there are a lot of things you're not going to understand, but you got to trust me. Now that you've arrived, I think we're going to find out what's happening here. Do I know you? My name is Tony Estacado. Okay, this is going to sound weird, but I guess that I'm your great-great-grandfather. What the hell is this place? Don't you see it? Everything happened here, Jackie. This is where it all began. That's why I'm back in this goddamn nightmare war. It's why we all are. I brought this darkness into our family. This is all my fault. What do you know about the darkness? Do you know why it chose me? I don't know. It, it needs a host, I guess. I messed up, Jackie. I brought it into the family. I didn't realize it would do this to us. The darkness. What the hell is it? The darkness is a living thing. It's some kind of a creature, old as time. It, it, it passes down from generation to generation, making itself known on the firstborn male's 21st birthday. Why did it bring me here? It needs its human host to stay alive. Somehow you broke the rules, Jackie. You died before your time. The darkness has to keep you here while it puts you back together. It won't allow you to die. How do I stop this? And how do I get out? Listen, there might be a way to control it. I found out that a long time ago, one of the human hosts forged two special weapons that were used to control the darkness. Promise me, Jackie, that you'll go find them. You gotta work out how to control this damn thing before it's too late. <laughs> Sergeant! There. We got a 
answer. So we'll be going home. If I'm living all that out. I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. Go up to the hills, Jackie. Just keep moving and don't look back. Don't listen to the darkness, Jackie. It'll lie to protect itself. Just keep going and don't look back. Don't believe him.
What the? You found them? <gasps> yeah, yeah. I got them. What now? The Brits have been fighting for centuries to get to those hills, but you're the one who made it. <sighs> All right. Here's what else I know. There's this thing. The darkness keeps it heavily fortified. A cannon outside an old castle. A cannon? How do I get to it? There's an underground sewer system that leads to the cannon. Krauts and strange things are crawling every damn where. I think the darkness put them there for a reason. The only way is through the catacombs, right down here. Steady your rifles! Keep your eyes peeled! First thing that moves, shoot it dead! Okay, Jackie, get going and move as fast as you can. Don't look back. Get going. Close it up quickly before they catch our scent. I don't like it, sir. Place is crawling with the damned hops. This is a mistake. And the kid will stick to his. This is our only chance to end this thing. It's dark down there, sir. There's something important here that the darkness is trying to protect. I could feel its agitation. But if I stay the course, if I defy the voices in my head and never look back, maybe up ahead I'll see a light. And maybe in that light, I'll see you, Jenny. Everything you know is a lie.
Somewhere, somehow, the darkness is doing whatever it can to keep me alive. Because it needs a human host. But not one that thinks and acts for itself. Like me. You have done well, Turkey. I was always on your side. Just was just a test. You should never have been here. Jenny gets murdered, your ass goes up in smoke, 
Everyone figured Paulie blew you the fuck away. He did, Jimmy. I just came back is all. You know, your Aunt Sarah, that poor woman, that poor woman would just sit there in her Raspberry Street apartment and wait just for you, yeah, just for you to show up. You ever do one thing right in this whole mess, in this whole life of yours, you go down to the Lower East Side and you see her, you hear me? You go down to Raspberry Street and you can see your Aunt Sarah. My Aunt Sarah. Now she taught me about life. After I left the orphanage, she was the one person who cared for me. And she loved you. Now when her husband Jimmy Franchetti died, the family forgot about her. Except for the older guys. And me. I've been so worried about you. I heard you were gone and I, I feared the worst. You look thin. Have you been eating? You come on inside. Come on. You want some minestrone? I know what's happened, Jackie. And you know how much I've always loved you. You know how I hate it when our family turns against each other like this. Aunt Sarah. I lost her. And what the hell am I gonna do without Jenny? It's terrible. I cleaned out her apartment. She was waiting for you, Jackie. Anyone but you could see it. Oh, you should have taken her away from this place when you had the chance. And now you've got to take care of it. I'm really sorry for the way things came out, Aunt Sarah. Now you know that I never meant any disrespect to you and the family. But I'm gonna have to take a stand against Paulie and Eddie Schroet and punish them for what they did. I know. And some of the older men, they'll support your decision, Jackie. But you're gonna have to earn their trust. If you were to hurt Polly's operation, they might consider joining you. They want things back the way they used to be. I'm gonna tear his face off, Aunt Sarah. Part of my language. But I'm gonna rip that dirty little motherfucker's face off and feed his lips to the fucking rats! But I can't kill that little fucking scumbag without your blessing. You know that. Well, kill is such a dirty word. But do what you have to do. And understand that you won't get to Polly unless you go through his police dog first. The only way to Paulie is through Captain Eddie Schroet. Now, I happen to know he has an apartment up by Gun Hill. And I spoke to Jimmy the Grape, 
and he's arranged for a man named Abe Hunter to let you into the building. I suggest you go there and take up Jimmy's offer of help while you can. Go to Gun Hill. Abe Hunter will be waiting for you there. He said you should take the subway to Fulton Street and that there should be a service entrance down in the Fulton Station that leads to Gun Hill. Everything to live for, and nothing to gain. I got nothing worth having without you. But at least I got a purpose. And that's tearing Eddie Schrote into a thousand pieces. It's my reason to live. Jackie, you heard the police got pity pajamas, don't they? Now, what about them? What happened is, the cops brought him in, they took him down in the basement to do a kind of impromptu Q&A with him, you know what I'm saying? Playing 20 questions. The problem with Pete is this, he's weak, he's real weak. You give him some fucking Indian burns and he'll squeal like a stuffed pig. But Pete, he knows stuff. Jackie... We need to shut that little piece of shit up. You know what I'm saying? Well, he's bound to tell those cops he's gonna leak down the quality. And if that happens, whoa, that's bad for all of us. All right. Where are they keeping him? Yeah, but that's the problem. We don't know where the fuck he is. We got a door number and that's it. You gotta keep your eye open for door 261, you hear me? The police got PD pajamas somewhere. Find him and make sure you don't rat anybody out. The only lead we got is door number 261. That guy's car? He came back and stole my harmonica. Where'd he go? He went down the Lower East Side. Chinatown. You're not here anymore. I'm trying to remember you. But all I get is this stupid shit. Like your wallpaper. Smelling your hallway. Even my mind is fighting me. Okay.
Tacky. Oh my god. Can you believe this place? Come here, check out this kitchen. <laughs> When I was a kid, I used to think that the subway system was like one big plate of spaghetti and all the stations were meatballs. My Uncle Pauly smacked me upside the head whenever I talked about stuff like that. Anyone who says the subway is dangerous never sat in the back of a yellow cab going the wrong way at 90 miles an hour through the Midtown Tunnel with a guy who can't speak a lick of English, my buddy, Crazy Abdul. You didn't tread on any dead hook. <laughs> What's at City Hall Station? I'm trying to find my brother, Ernie. I think he went down that way. You see Ernie Devore, you tell him his brother Mitch is waiting for him. You tell him to get his sorry ass back here. <laughs> more guts than most of the city boys I've seen around here. <laughs> Care to make a little wager? Just between friends? No thanks. Like Eddie 
shrugged. There's a good side and a bad side. Now, he's killed and tortured a few people. But then again, you should see his bad side. Now, I try not to judge, but for what he did to you, both sides are as good as dead. Estamos bien. Well, you took your sweet time, didn't you? I'm Abe Hunter. I don't know where the fuck you been. What? You hit traffic or something? All right. Schroth's up in his place. He's been there about an hour, maybe. Five will get you ten. He won't be expecting no company. Only about five people even know where he lives. Thanks for the info. Now, how do I get in? Listen, ride up in the elevator and go straight in. Follow the stink. You can't fucking miss it. All right, here you go, pal. Okay, so you got the key to Schroth's apartment. The elevator's over there. You do know how to work an elevator, right? Pushing the buttons often has the desired effective shit. Hello? Hey, leave me alone, all right? Hey, nice talking to you.
Anyone who says the subway is dangerous never sat in the back of a yellow cab going the wrong way at 90 miles an hour through the Midtown Tunnel with a guy who can't speak a lick of English, my buddy, Crazy Abdul. some old men with their dicks flapping in the breeze and their noses seriously out of joint, you know what I mean? And that little schmuck Paul, he's gone too far. He's got some fucking West Coast assholes doing all our meaningful labor. Jesus Christ, we've been earners for this family for more years than I care to remember. And now this. What do you say I put him over a barrel and show him the true spirit of family loyalty? I knew we could count on you, Jackie. There's an entire gang of these idiots. We need you to put them in the ground, one by one. Now, the first one's been tailing your Aunt Sarah, but don't think she don't know every move he makes. City Hall. You know, it used to be a subway station, but it pretty much went to hell a few years ago. It's the only way through to where I need to go, back to the motherfuckers who killed you. Human misery. Suffer. Disease of the mind and heart. That's the 
us here. It's a good place to die. Go back the way you came, pal. Cops shut down the entrance of the old Turkish baths a year ago. <laughs> yeah, by special order from Captain Edward Strong. Dickhead. That cocksucker Strodel stole our best hangout. Why don't you tell me what you know about Schrode? Ed Schrode is the biggest cocksucker on this side of the river. That fucking guy broke my brother's leg one time because he didn't know the capital of Denmark. I told him it was Copenhagen. Tell me about the Turkish baths. And you know another thing, we, we, we used to have a passage down to the old baths. They closed the place down after a couple of old ladies drowned one time. It was the warmest place in the city to sleep on a cold night. That bastard Eddie Schroeder stole it from us. Oh, hey. Good luck getting in there, pal. You need a compass and a half a turn of dynamite. Yo, have a great day. Okay? Yeah. And don't forget to come back and see us. We'll make up the spare room just for you. <laughs> Don't forget. Can't get into the entrance of the Turkish baths from here, sport. It's all blocked up nowadays. Listen. You want to get into the baths? Go ahead. I'd like to see you try. You can't be from down here. You don't have enough shit on your shoes. <laughs> okay, hey, hey. I wouldn't try going in there if I was you. The entrance is blocked besides, you don't want to get close to Devile's people. <laughs>
felt me to You humble servant, early divine. These are the old Turkish baths. Schroet's secret warehouse full of stolen evidence. But I got a little birthday surprise waiting for me, courtesy of good old Butcher Joyce. All I gotta do is get through half a legion of bank cops, find that suitcase, and bring it back to Butcher.
better not be another false alarm. No, you're thinking about the one by the roof hatch. This one's never squealed by itself. Uh, what the hell is wrong with it? Oh, shit! Who? Fucking idiot! Give up!
thing or two about ambushes, having set up most of Pauly's business in that regard for years. So I know when I'm about to be on the receiving end. Eddie's boys are gonna be out here intent on blowing my brains out. These fucking morons must think I was born yesterday. Man, I don't know who you pissed off, but you did a fine job. <laughs> hey, I seen about 20 or 30 cops down there. Heavy shit, SWAT, and everything. <laughs> Make sure you watch your back, son. You got half of the NYPD waiting for you down there. Okay, there's a bunch of cops and stuff down there. Be careful. on the radio, dipshit. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, over the radio. I said fucking maintain radio silence. Are you really that stupid? If you maintain radio silence, you're not supposed to tell everybody over the radio. Moron. How the hell else would I say it? Try semaphore. Now shut the fuck up.
fight fire with fire. That's what I always say. My Uncle Paulie always goes for the spectacular when he's breaking somebody's balls. Well, let's see how he likes it when I do the same to his main man, Eddie. Human flesh. This is where you are. Where you will remain. Say, did you see my brother? Well, I saw him, but I think he's kind of reluctant to meet up with you. He's got serious people problems. Oh, my brother Ernie's always been the family freak. Hey, but thanks for trying. Here. person I cared about was you. 
Now, the only person I care about is Eddie Schrode. Him and my Uncle Paulie. You just hang in there, Eddie. The screams of the dying, the cries of the dead. Human flesh rotted away. I saw the angels. They cried for what we had. meets opportunity. Well, I got my opportunity. Jury's out on whether or not I'm really prepared. One thing I know for sure, this is my path to the men who killed you. There's no way in hell anyone could stop me from paying them back for what they did. The numb nuts hangs around in the cemetery toilet. I wouldn't stay here for too long, son. I like your shoes. That means I gotta top myself again, but this time, I'm gonna take Eddie fucking Schrode along with me for a ride. Why this place? Filthy church. Well, I see you came alone. I know you keep your word, Jackie boy. And I see you brought my stuff, just like you promised. Go ahead, put it on the altar, nice and slow. dumbest mistakes possible. Like they train you guys to be dipshits on command. Kendall, turn off the lights! Hey, that's the guy. I'm just an girl of yours. Hey, the look on your face when we break 
Jackie, killing my people like they're nothing. I bet you feel like a tough guy full of those tricks in the dark. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out your weakness. Welcome back to the land of the living. But don't get used to it. <clears throat> okay. Now, tell me. Who helped you out on the hit at the turkey's baths? Oh, what's the matter? Helpless without that screwy shit you've been pulling in the darkness? Too light here, isn't it? <laughs> You're mine now. Ah, uh, let's get creative. You don't have to talk. I'm gonna have fun either way. Go give me that power drill. Sure thing, Eddie. It ain't Eddie, you fucking moron! It's Captain Shrope! Ah, oh, shit, sorry. Sure thing, Captain Shrope. Now, I'm gonna tell you how this works. You tell me who helped you out on the hit at the turkey's baths. You tell me who saw the briefcase. You play ball and you die quickly. Otherwise, you get little holes drilled in the pain centers of your brain. And believe me, I've done this work before. You may think you're a tough kid, but you don't want to go that second route. Low life. You know, you made Polly real nervous. That little turd is so paranoid, I gotta keep him in a safe place until the heat dies down. Now say your prayers. Holy Mary. Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at... Oh, Mother of God, that's a good one, boss. I mean, considering the shipment we got coming in. Well, don't tell him, you stupid shit! What's the difference? Who's he gonna tell? Won't make any difference if he knows about the... You said we was gonna waste him. Oh, yeah. We're gonna waste him. And if you say one more word about Mother of God, right. we're gonna waste you next! Easy. All right, all right, all right. Here you go. Now then, give me 
feel a little discomfort. Fuck. Shit. God damn it. You're plugging it all the way over there. Jesus Christ. God damn it. I'll do it myself. <laughs> no plan. No fucking forethought. Always got to fix every little goddamn thing myself. Just like fucking usual. Fucking blabbermouth guys. No common sense. No respect. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about all that later. Yeah. Now, where were we? You sure did put the cat among the pigeons, Estacado. You know what I'm saying? That means you fucked everything up. Why? Now we gotta do what we gotta do. You. That's it. That's all we gotta do. Hit it. Yes, darkness. You're fucking hilarious. You think Fuckface A could ever make me talk? Mmm. Manny messed up your face. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, boy. You know, when Eddie gets that drill fixed, this'll look pretty cute in comparison. I grow strong. You'll die before you realize what I'm up to. I seen a man die of shock one time before the drill even touched his skull. Lucky son of a bitch. Display your power. You realize no one's getting out of this alive, right? You know, Estacado, I never did like Paulie Franchetti. If I didn't have to kill you, I'd buy you a drink for what you did. You low-life fucking rat bastard. Die, you fuck. Yeah. Come over here. Lights in my eyes. I need some shade. You caused us a lot of trouble, Estacado. You know how long it's gonna take to repair all that damage you've done? Ah, dark bliss.
sword check. Don't work without a shell. You need to find one. Somewhere else. You are without hope. Die. Why can't I fucking die? It won't let us die. It's keeping us all alive. Majesties can ever be of service. Don't hesitate to ask. I need to find Anthony Estacado. You know where he went? Well, it's uh, it, it's all a bit hectic and whatnot. The Yank went off to the trenches. Uh, he said he was expecting you. Said he was getting things ready. Sorry, it's all I can remember. <laughs> Ignore them. I hate you, Jackie. 
They always lie. Come on, tally plonk. Everything ship shape and Bristol fashion. Everything ship shape and Bristol fashion. Done a cracking good job, Jackie. An absolute bloody corker. Our chaps can finally take the offensive. It's all thanks to you. Look, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take this to my wife, Mrs. Hazelgrove. When you see her, tell her I loved her, would you? Tell her. Tell her Charlie always thought of her, no matter what time or place. I know the situation was a bit of a bugger, but no matter what, the thought of her kept me alive. She was my light in the darkness.
goners there for sure. Goddamn tank almost crushed my spine. <laughs> hey, you don't look so good, Jackie. I'll go find something to get you out of here. Don't go anywhere, kid.
you get to the end of the line? I mean, what then? Maybe there is a way out. And I just can't find it yet. Or maybe it's through here. In the heart of the darkness. Or maybe I'm just walking into a trap. Don't let it 
it win.
You know what would be neat? If people had flying cars. It would also be neat if I had a clue what you were talking about. I'm just saying, where's my flying car? I thought we had them by now. They're called planes. No, I mean a car you could park in your garage. And when I was a kid, I was going to invent a flying car. So why didn't you? Well, I got sidetracked. Well, that doesn't surprise me. It's a full-time job being a sewage worker. I'm sorry. A sanitation technician. I should have invented a flying car. I would have made millions. But every time you try to invent something, it turns out like shit. Remember that robot you made? What was it called? The Robomatic 2000? It was 3000, actually. It would have worked fine if I had some operating capital. It was made out of cardboard. That's just to save money on the prototype. And Lenny had to sit inside operating it. So what's wrong with that? Well, maybe I don't have the foresight of a brilliant inventor such as yourself, but it seems to me that you were pretty far off anything near a working design. That's not fair. The Lenny dependency was a design flaw, but nothing that couldn't have been resolved. Hmm. Did you ever think about using a material other than cardboard, like Kevlar or something? Yeah, to protect Lenny. <laughs> That's brilliant. Maybe I should re-examine that design. Something that's not so prone to catching fire. Look, I'm not so sure that's the right approach. I could make it out of cement. You find cement everywhere. Yeah, but it usually belongs to someone. All right, how about egg boxes? Also combustible. Scrap metal. There are plenty of fridges lying around, and they're always full of old electronic parts. Hmm, didn't this start with you wanting to invent a flying car? I changed my mind. Imagine what this could do for people. It'd be a cheap source of labor for everyone. Anyone who says the subway is dangerous Never sat in the back of a yellow cab, going the wrong way, at 90 miles an hour, through the Midtown Tunnel, with a guy who can't speak a lick of English, my buddy, Crazy Abdul. a couple of weeks in a dark place. You wouldn't understand. Mystery man, huh? Well, you sure made some waves, son. The Chicago boys are considering pulling the plug on your dear old Uncle Paulie. He's on his knees, ready to suck whatever dick he can so he won't freeze his assets. He's holed up. Not even Butcher knows where. Schroed's people mention Mother of God. Now, I think it had something to do with the administration in Chicago. You know anything about that? Nah, uh, strange. He and Pauly got religious? Run the name with Butcher. <laughs> He's gonna shit in his britches. When you show up, you're supposed to be dead. So go see Butcher. He should be over Aunt Sarah's. He's, uh, helping around with some stuff or some shit. I... I don't know. What's the matter, dear? Can I help you? Mrs. Hazelgrove? I'm not sure we've ever met ever, dear. Mind you, I am getting a little forgetful. Yes, I'm Rosie Hazelgrove. Mrs. Hazelgrove, I know this is gonna sound real strange, but there's something I need to tell you. What is it, Dad? 
It's that eclipse they were talking about on the news. Yeah, just feels weird. Whatever it is, it's big. I feel like a penguin trying to stop a runaway polar bear. I was poking around, you know, the Lower East Side, as I am wont to do. <laughs> it's my husband, Harry's always teasing me. Well, anyway, then I went by the harbor a few hours ago, and the wind is just picking up. You think it has to do with that eclipse thing? thing was way too obvious. I figured it had to be something else. Now I knew that Aunt Sarah and Butcher were ready to see Schrote and Paulie's asses on a platter. I've already got an opening. Maybe they can help turn it into a gaping hole. Man, I'm babysitting a wrinkled old bitch. Motherfuckers. Someone should just kill the old bitch. What's your problem? Scram or I'll make you beg for your whore of a mother to come and save you.
way! Got it! Still alive. Oh, thank the Lord. <sighs> Holy catfish. Jackie? Jackie, is that you? This problem with your Uncle Paulie has gone on long enough, Jackie. It's time to take action. I think the decision has just about made itself anyway, what with the way he's been carrying on. Now, some old friends of the family want to know what they can do to help. Eddie Schroed's guy said something about the Mother of God. It was supposed to be an inside joke, but it meant something. Now, I think there's some kind of connection to the Chicago family's something Paulie wants to keep to himself. Mother of God? Like the Virgin Mary? You don't suppose he's talking about the Santa Maria? Mm -hmm. That's a Chicago family boat. It's been running shipments of drugs into the harbor for years. Knowing Eddie, he wouldn't resist a chance to talk about it to a dying man. <laughs> he always did have diarrhea in the mouth. Especially if there's something big going on. Chicago family's gonna be real interested in what happens here, Jackie. This is gonna be your best chance to get Paulie out of the picture for good. Just say the word, and I'll help if I can. I want to know more about this Santa Maria Butch. Anything there I can use against Pauly? Listen, Jackie, I would never normally say this. <clears throat> you know me. I never choose sides. But you already put a hole in Pauly's finances when you took out Dutch Oven Harry's operation. You put a few holes in that boat, Santa Maria. <laughs> the Chicago family's gonna pull a plug, and Paulie will find himself swimming to the bottom of the river. I need to know how to mess up Paulie's deal. They got people inside the Coast Guard. They usually wait for the coast to clear, and they call the Santa Maria in from the harbor to make a shipment. <clears throat> There's a radio they use down at Grinders Lane to the correct frequency at all times. Uh, you get to that radio and call in, and they'll send the boat. <laughs> now you do what Butcher says. The boat's name is Santa Maria. You should go to Grinders Lane and find that radio. Go to Grinders Lane. There's an exit at Fulton Street Station. If you get to that radio and call in, they'll send the boat. I had my first kiss down here. I was 15. Some hooker named Candy. She crossed her legs and broke my sunglasses. Good times.
the sound of gunfire. The smell of trenches. But then, the light came to the darkness. And it comes again. The final battle. The war to end all wars. We're all in the line of fire. Using the New York subway is kind of like playing dodgeball, okay? You can only avoid trouble for so long, but when you do get in the line of fire, you better know how to fire back. <laughs> Canal Street. During the war, they used to have this saying, loose lips sink ships. Now I know what they mean. And soon, the Chicago families will know too. All I need is that radio to call in their boat. You can bring in the boat. Everything's clear. Over. Affirmative. We are coming in.
Envelope and give it to Mickey Famiano. We'll come into Canal Street on the A train. Jesus, Petey. Why not give me something a little bit challenging? How do I recognize this guy? Yeah, he's a cocky son of a bitch. Wears a hat. A red hat. Day and night. Yeah, you won't miss him. Can't imagine where it is. Chinatown. You're not here anymore. I'm trying to remember you, but all I get is this stupid shit. Like your wallpaper, smelling your hallway. Even my mind is fighting me.
on, you know, the Lori side as I want to do. <laughs> as my Gosh. husband Harry's always <laughs> teasing me. Well, anyway, then I went by the harbor a few hours ago, and the wind is just picking up. You think it has to do with that eclipse thing? Job's not worth doing unless you do it right. Paulie's a dead man unless he grows a beard and learns how to speak Swahili. Or he won't get a chance. Not for as long as I draw breath. I'm here because Paulie Franchetti tells me where I gotta be. So when he tells me to watch out for his mother of God boat or whatever, that's what I do. Now, you fucking dipshit. I mean, did you hear about Ernie Polanco? Oh, right. I get it. Well? No, I, I ain't heard nothing. Well, get this. The other day, Paulie sends Polanco to rub out Timmy the nose. Right? Paulie gave Ernie Polanco a hit? Why? Because Polanco is Al Capone's great nephew, that's why. Yeah, but he's a fucking moron. I lent him my car one time. And he parked it by a fucking police station because he got lost and needed directions. They found a half a kilo of weed in the back seat, and any Schrode had to come bail me out. Oh, shit. <laughs> I wonder why Paulie's been so pissed at you lately. Ernie numbnuts Polanco, that's why. Well, you're gonna love this. So Paulie sends Polanco after Timmy the Nose, right? I guess Timmy owes Paulie money or something. You know Timmy the Nose? Yeah. Everyone knows Timmy the Nose. Fucking guy looks like Pinocchio on steroids. You couldn't miss him in a crowd of a million people. You could if your name was Ernie Polanco. The hit was supposed to go down outside Papa Rossi's restaurant. Polanco drives up, leans out the window, yells out to Timmy, and opens fire on the outdoor tables. Could be a sitting target out there. I guess Timmy bought the farm, huh? No. Polanco was at a completely different restaurant on the wrong side of the street. He clipped about 12 innocent people, including a bunch of Chinese delegates who were here as guests of the mayor. Ah, you gotta be kidding me. The wrong restaurant? The wrong restaurant. Lee Fung's Chinese restaurant, no less. Not exactly Italian cuisine. You'd figure all the chopsticks and Chinese people would have given it away. Apparently, all the while this has gone down, Timmy the Nose is sitting at a table on the other side of the street outside Papa Rossi's, wondering what all the noise is about. 
What a dipshit. At least there's one piece of good news, though. Polanco's got a fry for this one. I wish. Pauly gave him a bonus. What? What for? I guess he don't like Chinese food. Does it gives him gas? That sounds like the Pauly we all know and despise. Now, now where are the boys? The boat's a fucking free-for-all until we get her unloaded. I'll be a pazienza. Oh, come. Just relax.
Now that Polly's found out that the old crew's on my side, it's like some snake bit him on the heel. Next thing I know, I got Jimmy the Grape and everybody all holed up at Aunt Sarah's place, while Polly's boys crawl out all over them like stink on shit. I guess maybe this is what I wanted all along. The opportunity to impress. On their own right now, we'll show them the door. Stick your face out so I can shoot you in the face. Darkness will fall.
didn't think much of the redecorating job, Jackie. It's the work of Paulie's rat bastard backstabbing motherfuckers. Oh, I am glad to see you're all in one piece. That and the Chicago people. They're gonna be grateful that you protected your Aunt Sarah. They'll owe you a great debt. But Paulie, on the other hand, oh. Okay, I've got a lead for you. I think I know where Paulie Franchetti's been keeping himself. Paulie paid for an old lighthouse to be renovated last year. He's out there, hoping the hell you don't find him. You can only get there by boat. You got balls, kid. You really got balls. And you got brains. Listen, me and some of the old guys, we've been talking the other day, and we were saying that someone like you, with brains, balls, and respect, and someone who honors the old ways, you know what the old ways mean, don't you? Because there ain't nothing but the old ways. So what we want, we want for you to come in and take over the family. Just for a little while. Huh? You like that? Come on. This way you'll be the guy, you'll be the Don. Sure. As long as it doesn't interfere with my day job. That's the spirit, kid. Don't let it go to your head, huh? Now get this straight. There's a boat waiting for you down at Pier 19. Mario's there. He'll take you out to the lighthouse. Okay? You ain't home yet. There's a boat waiting for you down at Pier 19. It'll take you to the lighthouse. All right, Jackie, this is it. You hear me? You take a ride with Mario, and you give that fucking prick Paulie a science lesson. Let the piece of shit see what he looks like when his fucking brains are spread all over the goddamn floor. Suspect from Lower East shooting is believed to be in vicinity recently. 
Looking at. What the Step hell are you down, looking at? Clown. Except I'm not the one lining up for the last rites. It's my loving Uncle Paulie. He knows the end of the story as well as I do. But he don't like it as much. You know what I say to that? Fuck him. I seen that stupid little prick shovel a whole mountain of shit onto some good friggin' people. Dealing with dope heads and selling out to the cops. Take Polly Franchetti out, I'll be right behind you. You want him
What happened? <laughs> Please, Jackie, come on. We've been through so much together, man. It wasn't me. It was Polly. I swear to God, it was Polly. Oh God, I can't feel my legs. Oh God, please. I have a family. Please. Please. Please, just let me live. Please, I'll do anything. Please take him. I told you I don't know anything. some dead chick when you cut her on the wall. She was a weakness, Jackie! You shouldn't have cared! But this door needs to be rash here. <laughs> Why don't you fucking listen to me, you piece of shit? When he dies, I own you. Take his life so that I can take yours. I mean, you think hard. Don't make a hasty decision. I could do a lot for a guy like you. Jesus, listen, I'm serious. Anything you want, you, you just ask. I can get it for you. You want a cut? Just say the word. We're both men of the world, you and me. We know the score. Just let me go, okay? Kill him and lose your soul to me. Jackie, please! 
Yes. I'm begging you on my very soul. <laughs> For me. Make the market suffer. Do it, Jackie. No! That's the cut You fucking piece of shit. I hope you rot in hell forever. Was the end of the line. There's always a little light in the darkness. Didn't I tell you so, sweets? Jenny? We get one moment, Jackie. It's all they can allow. What? Who? Just one moment. Just to say goodbye. You were everything to me. And all I ever did was kill you. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I can't forgive you, Jackie. How can I forgive you when it wasn't your fault? You have to go now. I don't want to go. I want to stay here with you. I know. Am I dreaming? Yes. You have to wake up now.
Feel die Trying to 